This is a lab solution video for lab one, running your first Docker container. The first container we're going to run is an Ubuntu container. We're going to use the docker run command to run a container with the Ubuntu image using the top command. The dash T flag allocates a pseudo TTY, which we're going to need for the top command to work correctly. When we run docker container run, docker will download the Ubuntu image and then run a container based on the Ubuntu image. You'll notice that the top output only shows a single process, and that's the process that's running inside of the container. You don't see any processes that are running on the host. This is because of the PAD namespace, which I'll talk about more in just a minute. To take a closer look at our container, or perhaps we want a debugger container, we're going to use the docker container is exec command to enter the namespaces for that container. First, we'll run the docker container ls command to get the ID of the container that it's currently running. So we're going to do docker container exec uh, dash it the ID of the running container and then bash, which is the process that we want to run. So this command runs bash inside of the namespaces that are defined by the container with the DID um, that we've set here. You can notice that the prefix of the terminal has changed. So this is one way, one indication for how we know that we're running bash inside of the container. Um, you can see root at container ID is the default format here. So while we're running bash inside of our container, we can double check what we saw before, which is that the PID namespace provides a uh, PID isolation of the container from the host. So if we run the command ps-ef, we'll see the processes that are running inside of the, the container. Before we saw just top, but now we're running the bash process as well, um, as well as we see the psef-ef command that we just ran. If you want to compare, um, type exit to exit the container to get back to running a terminal directly on your host and then type dash ps dash ef. You'll see a huge list of processes that are running on your host, which were not visible from inside of your container. If you would like to find more documentation on the Ubuntu image or find more information on other available image, images, navigate to the Docker store in your browser. If you type in Ubuntu in the search bar, you should be able to find the Ubuntu image that we were just using. We're going to take a couple of images that we can find on the Docker store and run them locally using Docker Container Run. Let's start an Nginx container. We're going to use Docker Container Run with a few additional flags. The detach flag will run this container in the background. And the publish flag will expose port 80 on our local host. Inside of the container to port 8080, we're also going to use the name flag to give our container a name. This is going to come in handy when we want to run subsequent commands. We don't need to look up the ID of the container. We can reference the name that we gave it. So the reason I know to expose port 80 from inside the Nginx container is because I can find the information on the Nginx image page on the Docker store. As we can see on the Nginx image page here, and we can scroll down to see how to expose an external port to the host. When the container is running, open up a new tab in your browser and navigate to localhost port 8080, and you should see the Nginx container running. Now let's run a MongoDB container. We're gonna use a Docker container run command like before with very similar arguments. This time we're going to expose port 27017 running inside the container to port 8081 on our host. Again, you can refer to the official documentation on the Docker store to figure out which ports need to be exposed. So once this container is running, we can navigate to localhost 8081 and we can see our MongoDB container running. At this point, we have three containers running. We have our Ubuntu container, our Nginx container, and our MongoDB container. 
We can see these three containers by doing the docker container ls command. One thing you should note is that we never actually installed any of these applications on our host directly. Docker makes it really easy for developers to run these applications by finding the applications they want to run in the Docker store and then using the Docker container run command. Another thing to think about is that all of these applications are running in isolation. So even if you have, if, or even if you want to deploy containers with conflicting dependencies, say different runtime versions, for example, you really don't have to worry about running those containers on the same host because they're isolated from each other. So that concludes lab one, running your first Docker container. But before we sign off, let's clean up these running containers to get ready for the next lab. To clean up our system, let's run docker container stop for each of our container IDs. We can use docker container ls to, again, to print out the containers that we're trying to stop. And then we can use docker container stop, and we can use the names if we specify the name. So we can do docker container stop, nginx, and mongo. But remember, we didn't give a name to the Ubuntu container that we ran, so we need to pass in the ID for that container. Once we've stopped all of our containers, we can run docker system prune, which is a really handy command to clean up our system. Docker system prune will remove any stopped containers and it will re remove any unused volumes and networks as well as any dangling images. Once we run that command, our, our environment should be ready to go for the next lab.